lift you up like this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you repeat our belly aqua as if you know it's like oh no? Sijali, Sijali, Karibu, you know, ladies first. Yeah. Yeah, so welcome, welcome to my studio. This is also home, by the way. Yeah. And like, it feels very homely. It does, it does. Maybe that's why. Okay, Nishan Zakusema, Nishan Zakusema. Does it feel homely? It does. No, it does. Uh-huh. It really does. Okay. Like, it's, it's very beautiful. I love the lighting. I love how you know, Thank you. spacious and Thank you. airy it is. Thank you. But yeah, I don't think I've ever asked you, uh-huh. how did you get into makeup? Eh, hey, hey, you want to know? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I did agriculture in school. Huh? So, as I was doing agriculture, I started doing um, modeling. Uh-huh. I think I was doing like some runways here and there. So, through the runways, makeup was being done on me, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. I love it. And then, just kidogo kidogo, I started doing it on my fellow peers, like uh. my model friends and all that. And then, just we were just started being called, like, yo, Dennis, come help out with for this gig. Yeah. yeah. And I just go, like, do my thing. In fact, I didn't know how to pack anything. So, uh, you know, like, the very first time we went, they told us, you know what, you guys uh, um, have the job, mm. come every Friday. So literally makeup found you. Makeup found me. Makeup like found honestly, you. I never thought I'd do this ever. This was nowhere close to something that I thought yeah. that I could do like for life as a career because yeah. now it's my career. Yeah. So um after agribusiness, mm-hmm. that's when now I told dad, you know what? I think I'm going to now start doing this. Yeah, makeup artist. Yeah. artist. Yeah. How did he take it? He was shook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he he was not ready. Even my siblings, they were not ready. Yeah. They were like, whoa, are you Allah. serious? You know, I came with like a box. You see like these makeup boxes. Yeah. I went with it home and they were like, wait, you bought this thing? I was like, yeah. They were like, for what? See, for business. Allah. They were like, you walk around with this thing nowadays. <laughs> like, <"Nah." Yeah. laughs> very very interesting to hear i think yeah. our origin stories are a bit alike yeah. i'm a makeup artist for just a bit i was seeing your vlogs at the yeah, time yeah around 2016 yeah i don't think i did it for long enough to yeah. imagine i could even have a studio like this because this yes. is wonderful like yes. a time uh-huh. and it for one year and then my back used to hurt so much i was like Yo, I give up. makeup I is give to be up. honest um the job of makeup artistry is not for it's, everyone yeah and it's not simple it's, it's not, not simple it's, it's, it's not right see yeah. and that's why when, when people see like makeup paying they need to know like honestly Pia you are you really worked your ass off yeah. to be honest Should yeah you too. okay mm. so before we get into it I yeah. think you can go ahead and read us your letter first okay so so um so I just sit or or, or stand uh, no, she has- ah! <laughs> okay you know I do just my letter had a lot of typos but I think it's it's Forgive me. <laughs> <Mama. Lisa Mama. laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what is this picture that I'm showing this picture? <laughs> A letter to my younger self, so dear 23 year old me, I know you you barely recognize you or you barely recognize me <laughs> anyway. I know you barely recognize you four years four and a half years later as I am writing this to you. Uh, you chose celibacy for a whole year due to the consistent traumas you have faced back to back ever since the first major blow of mom's loss. Guess what? The choices you made have made you iconic. Do you remember a letter you wrote in December 2018 on email? I opened it the same date in 2019 and I can't help but cry. All that was written in that letter had already come to pass, apart from one thing. I am so proud of you. I wish you were free, little one. I wish you had realized how cool you are just by being authentically you. I wish you grasped your worth. I wish you took mom's advice to say no. Even even through all this, I am still trying to be deep-rooted to myself. That December has left a significant scar that is still there with me today. But guess what? It has brought me to realizations that are 
unfathomable to me. And for this reason, I can say everything does happen for a reason. Okay, so you start off your letter saying, um, 23-year-old Dennis, you know? Yes. You can't even recognize me right now. Yeah. Why don't you think 23-year-old Dennis wouldn't recognize you right now? Trust me, I, I don't think they will. 23-year-old me was very different. Mm -hmm. I was very... I was masked. Mm -hmm. Seriously masked. Huh? So you see this, all this. Yeah. This is like opposite of who I was when I was 23. I was like, when I was 23 years old, like, I couldn't wear anything like this, to be mm -hmm. honest, especially with like how I present myself. Yeah. When I was 23, I couldn't, I had sequa. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. So is that why you say, um, Something along the lines of young one, I wish you were free. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I wish I was free. Um I was I, I wish I was free because also um the events that happened um you know before I was twenty-three mm -hmm. they like most of them happened because I was not free, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And do you feel free now? Yes, I do feel a lot a lot Free, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I feel I feel more free because in terms of like um, me being able to do what I love and boldly, that is definitely freeing. Like makes me feel freer. And how is the process like the process of passing freeing yourself? <sighs> it was tormenting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> to say the least, because. Um, um, I was I was being hit by so many things um, ever since I left high school because now after high school that's when now being an adult hit me very well. Uh, I had so much desire to live by myself, mm -hmm. you know, just have a house somewhere and just go live by myself. It was just something that I really desired, but I didn't know that I was stepping into being an adult and I was not ready for what was waiting for me outside because my parents were quite skeptical about me living by myself, mm -hmm. but then I was very mischievous. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so you were looking for uh, freedom again? Yes, I was sense. looking for freedom, yes, <laughs> yes to some extent, I, I think so. So when I, so the way the way I managed to leave home was, I I, I kind of lied to my dad. I was like, yo, I've already paid half the deposit for this place. <laughs> we shall appear by then. It's too late. Yeah, so it's too late. So just send me the other half, uh -huh. of which I knew that the other half was paid by my former roommate mm. in campus at the time. Yeah, and that's how I started living by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you know now about um, your worth, or like knowing your worth that yeah. you didn't know then? Um, so, um, the one thing that has stood out is people now see me for me, mm -hmm. you know? So they know what they are associating themselves with, and they already know me for, like me for me. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, um, I couldn't, I couldn't be able to freely tell someone that this is what I'm worth. Yeah. This is what I deserve. Simply because I was not even being that person who deserves whatever they feel like they deserve. Mm -hmm. So over time, um, as, as I started, you know, um, letting myself, being open to who I am, you know, letting myself be, mm -hmm is when I also found out that it's also very, very easy for me to boldly tell you my worth and boldly tell you this is what I deserve. Is it because I noticed when we're walking in, um, there's that poster there that has your tagline at the bottom, it's yeah. authentic. On th authenticity, authenticity and, and professionalism. So is that where like, the authenticity part comes yes. from? Yes, the authenticity part definitely comes from that area because um, not not many spaces around here are are like they are in the nature of my space. Mm -hmm. My space is very different. Like whatever I want my clients to experience is something very personalized, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is just me and how I like my things to be. You know, very freeing. Also, in my on my Instagram, the bio is um, an icon blending the rules. Mm -hmm. I don't really like going by the rules always because you may find me. Um, you know, um, in not like not following the rules always, but it's because I it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Why not? It's okay because 
um, some some roles are are not freeing enough, mm-hmm. and you know there's always boundaries that you know hey, this is the further I can go in terms of breaking the rules, but I honestly feel like in my own space some rules are not followed. Like in my studio, there are some rules that I don't follow here. Yeah. In terms of like dress code, for example, my staff can come as, as the way as they want to are, be, yeah. as you are. You just come as you are. Um, but if we have a gig somewhere else, we may have to limit. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So you also uh, mentioned mom in the video. Yeah. Um, when did she pass? Mom passed on in 2014. I was in my second year freshly. Yeah. Actually freshly from first year going to second year in campus. How old were you at that point? I was around um, 21. 20, oh, so it's even before. It's even before 23 years. Yeah, yes, yeah. It's even before. How did she pass, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, uh, I don't mind you asking. My mom used to do business. She used to go for farm produce directly from the farmers and mm-hmm. supply the produce here in Nairobi. So she could send people sometimes, but then she liked going herself with the, the transport guys and come supply. She was basically a supplier in, in, large, in large scale. Mm-hmm. So this one time, she she had gone and it was actually on a, she traveled on a Sunday night and uh, you know I, I, I was always going I was always supposed to go home every weekend and now she called me that Monday like that Monday during the day and she was like hey I didn't see you home last weekend is everything okay you okay I was like yeah I'm okay everything is good so um later that evening is when yeah the news is 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 you know broken to us and we are told that she has succumbed to death from an accident. Mm. She was hit by the lorry that actually she was that took her there. So yeah. Well, uh, how did her passing affect you? Well, like I you know, I just came to a, a lot of realizations because um first of all like I was not very like I was not very I don't know how to put it but I really did not know what I was doing with my life Mm -hmm. I had no direction I had no purpose I had like I literally felt like mom passing is also like I'm also dead inside Mm -hmm. because um, you know she was always um, affirming things to us like you know I see you doing this in future she was really saying that I see you being a superstar she would say such things and I knew um, you know, she's it's it's now her. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, she she's done. I need to make proud mm. because you know she says all these things. So I can't wait for her to see them pass. Yeah. But then when she passed on, I was like, now what am I going to do? Mm. What do I do now? Because I don't even know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, school. I had no. I had like taste for school was no more because it's like hey, I don't even know why I'm studying anymore because. I, like I had no reason to move, mm-hmm. so that really made me step back a bit and just think, you know, just think and try to find out why why am I even alive in the first place? You know, like why am I doing life? Why am I doing life in the first place? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, and that is when I started modeling. Mm. Yes, that is how I started modeling because my mom used to pay a very big part of my bills. Um, my my dad was settling the school fees, um, mm-hmm. but my mom was now my bills like um, upkeep in my in my hostel yeah. and also mostly rent. Also, but my dad also used to chip in rent. But my mom used to because she was the one that I could access easily. Dad was always traveling. Uh, a true boss, baby. I held yes, it down. Held it down properly. Yeah. So. Yeah, but when but when she passed, now like there was now dad had a lot of responsibilities they could not and dad asked me to go back home and I was like hey that's not a option for me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I cannot because it was already bad as it is so um, I started modeling mm-hmm. and I found a newly like I, I just a new energy just started um, flowing through me you know and I really enjoyed the entertainment world and I felt a bit of like you know, I, I felt more structure with myself, with my life once I engaged entertainment. Yeah. And that is how makeup started as well. Yeah, so even 
um, after everything like falling apart, mm. somehow it like came back together and yes. all made sense, you know, yes. eventually. Eventually, uh, yes. Especially when I started doing makeup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a bit crazy at first. But yeah, look at me. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> Truly, look at you. <laughs> And now she she also you also say mm-hmm. that um, she was telling you to learn how to say no. no. Yeah. What was she referring to? Like say no to what? Yeah, I could even like give you a good example. Uh, like, um, but the, that's my younger brother. Just so you ah. know. <laughs> yes, I've had my siblings as well. So my younger brother would tell me like we are at the dining table. My my younger brother would be like, yo, bring me some water from the kitchen. I'd be like immediately. Yeah. Go for it. And I almost would be like, hey. So this younger brother, I think you, he should be, you should be the one sending him once yeah. now because, yeah, like him sending you Kidogo because like generally, you know, and I was like, ah, it's fine, it's fine. So my mom always told me because I was, I was too kind mm-hmm. and too, I could be wavered very easily. Like friends would come home and they'll be like, ah, yes, let's go. Yes, let's go. Mm-hmm. Yes, let's do this. Yes, let's do this. The house help wants anything. Yes, yes, yes. My yeah. mom just tell me, no, no, no. It's, sometimes it's okay. Just say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just say no because you, you maybe you don't feel like doing it mm-hmm. and you still are open to doing it and they can also do it themselves. Yeah. So it's okay. Say no. Say no. Mm. So then do you feel like, one, it led to people like taking advantage of A that? A lot. Yeah, and A also, lot. two, did it come from a place of like people pleasing some extent. yes yes to some extent to be honest i i you know i i always felt the need to ensure that people around me are happy they are contented they are comfortable even the people that you know don't really deserve that yeah <laughs> because there are people who like honestly like they're not there for you they're not mm-hmm. there for the vibes you know yeah and you would just be kind to them and sometimes it's okay to um you know if someone is unkind to you don't show them kindness yeah yeah it's okay because y- y- i'm just reciprocating what your the energy you're giving mm-hmm. me you know so people pleasing yes and also just very timid. Let me call it timid. Yeah. Yeah, like saying no would be like, oh, it was such a huge task. Yeah. Uh, you know, but... How will they take it? Yeah, yeah, but... Yeah, I just had to gather enough courage and mm-hmm. balls. So now at 27, in regards to like mm. saying no and putting up those boundaries, yeah. how would you say you're doing it differently now than... Yeah. Um, than right now... Actually, I thought... To be honest, people think, people have always thought of me as a person who can easily say no. Mm-hmm. But no, actually, it's it's still quite difficult for me to say no sometimes. Um, but right now, um, how, how I'm able to say no is I just do a bit of background check. How am I feeling? You yeah. know, how am I feeling? Are you in, in that space to do whatever is required or whatever is asked of you? Um, and then secondly, is it like, of, is it of value? You know, is it adding value to me? Mm-hmm. Is it something that I feel like will be of progress you yeah know? um so i just do a background check and if it takes most of the points i'd be like sour let's do it but sometimes you know eh, you're just like yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sometimes that are you know but some of it is is work yeah. and you know you have to do <laughs> you have to work i wish i was not i wish i was just being paid to be a nice man i'd be alive for, for life. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway um yeah so um, I evaluate things and I'll, I'd say no it's where, where it's required. And now that I also hired people and I don't really have like a human resource person. Mm-hmm. So I've also learned to say no so many times because yeah. it's very, there's a thin line between saying yes and no at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's even very shocking that you describe yourself as timid because that's not what we see. <laughs> Exactly. You see a very bold, a exactly. very courageous exactly. person. Exactly. Like, that's yes. the vibe that you'd give off. So I think it's very shocking that you describe yourself like Trust that. Trust me. Um, I, I feel like for the people that I know who are quite bold, quite, you know, out there, mm-hmm. when you really interact with them on a personal level, you'll just find out they're just like quite, 
yeah. timid. Yeah, they're quite timid. Also, maybe the confidence is a mask sometimes, mm. but it's something that they have learned over time. Mm. You know, because if you are if you are if you are timid, Sana, you yeah. might have to back it up with a lot of confidence. But if you're okay, you're okay. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's almost like a not really fake it till you make it, but faith it, faith, faith it, it till, till you make, make it. it. And some extent also fake it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like I've been in spaces like. I feel, oh my God, I have serious anxiety yeah. right now. But you know what? I sit up. You show up. I show up. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And well. I show up the way I want to show up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you mentioned um, some tragic events yeah. that sort of led you to into celibacy. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? Like what happened? Some of them are quite sensitive mm-hmm. because um, they were... They were overboard, um, and also like it was there was some malice involved, mm. um, other people involved, you know, and it really changed. It really changed my thought and perception because if if I was in a position whereby I knew myself and I knew um, someone could not use me against me, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, like. Yeah, some 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 of them are quite sensitive. Mm-hmm. I may not be comfortable being very open about. But then yes, they led me to celibacy and I just didn't want some form of interaction with people just so that I can heal. Yeah. And um now the healing was what was even crazier because I couldn't tell anyone. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I couldn't tell anyone. Like I, I felt like no one could understand where I was at at that point and how it came to be there like or how I even found myself where I found myself and it was not just that um, some also very tiny tiny things that happened in between that I was like if I was Dennis mm-hmm. like for real like someone wouldn't feel the urge to like or just to just to take advantage of you know but not because I was under a mask mm-hmm. you know I was timid, I was young, I was naive. It was very easy for people to take advantage yeah. of that. And it's just so sad that human society can be based upon just a lot of selflessness. Like, it's not selflessness, like selfishness. selfishness. Yes, yeah, selfishness. Yeah. Selfishness that they don't, really, they don't even care about the other party or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's a bit sad. Yeah. So, 2018, December, I even wrote a letter. Yeah. <laughs> the one that I that I mentioned there. Yeah, I wrote that letter, and I was in a very dark time in my life. Mm-hmm. I wrote that letter, and it, it just came to me like something. I just saw something online, and there, and it was called Future Me. Mm-hmm. So it's just you writing a letter to the future you. No. Now, yours is now the opposite, yeah. writing a letter to your younger self. Yeah. So this is you writing a letter to your future self. Mm-hmm. And then they will resend that letter this, like around the time that you requested. So I requested oh, for so it was, yeah, is it like an app year. or something? Yes, it's, no, it's an in, it's also uh, or an a app. Website. It's, an, it's an app. It's uh-huh. a website. It's a website, actually. It's a website that you just type your email, you send that letter there, and then mm. you can set it for maybe a month. But the shortest one was a year. One year, five years, ten years, and I sat for one year, and now it. I to be honest, the whole year I had it in mind. Yeah. <laughs> so for some reason, but then the day it came, I was shook. I was like, Ah, yeah, this <laughs> one was supposed to yeah, come, and I was actually waiting for it. And then I read it, I was like, Oh, I was such in a sad. I was in a very sad space, and I could literally feel the feelings, the emotions, the pain that I was feeling as I was writing that yeah. specific letter when I was reading it again in 2019, December. How would you say, um, like, going celibate mm. changed your life? Yeah, to be honest, like, it really switched. Like, it took me 12 months mm-hmm. to, like, switch things over with myself. And I cannot say that I flipped the coin 100%. Yeah. But to be honest, like, my compass just took a very massive, massive shift. Like, I shift, like, I don't know, my life, like, I was just, that was a major shift for mm-hmm. me. Um, first thing is, you know, I did, like, um, in terms of, like, sexual interactions, they were very minimal. Honestly, they were very, very minimal. Like, I had Kidogo 
kidogo anything to do with like sexual whatever around my space mm-hmm. that made me think about other things you know yeah, made me focus on other areas yeah, building other areas and also like having some new energy flowing within me yeah? mm-hmm. so first thing i can say that it did for me is it really showed me like it really like my my vision just became clear yeah. you know like i was just so sure about what i wanted i was very very sure about what i wanted and also what i did not want mm-hmm. because sometimes when it comes to like sexual um you know connections you may do something that you don't want mm-hmm. yeah and you'll be like <laughs> 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 but um that by by me um locking that side mm-hmm. it really because i could just say yes to anything i could yeah you know yeah. so it really showed me what is yes and what is no for real because i was like no i have a clear vision so um you went through a lot of traumatic events yeah so like mom passing yeah. um all those other things that you've mentioned before yeah yeah and you said like you weren't able to talk to anyone you felt mm. like no one would really understand yeah. so then i'm assuming mm. um you didn't do therapy no nope. um so how like how did you get out of it um i didn't do any therapy i did not have any professional like i did not seek any professional help mm-hmm. but i had very good support system around me so my sister has studied psychology although like i did not open up to her and tell her you know everything that happened to me but she was she was like you know she knew how to work her way around you know me trying to figure myself out and all that i moved places a lot mm-hmm. um and also um i was also like training her bits because i had a vacancy at my space mm-hmm. so we ended up working together with her and i think through through staying with her for a while and also just me uh, you know just trying to maneuver life yeah. yeah i think i just made i just passed on nanika i i became better every day and you know everything just started restructuring itself pole pole uh, yeah okay mm. um so now at 27 mm-hmm. uh, going having gone through all that process mm-hmm. uh, what did you say you learned about healing um one thing about healing it's is, is that it really takes time yeah. honestly it takes a lot of time only ways to yeah it's, it just go through it and um i've also been by myself so many times and it's okay it's sometimes just be by yourself you know and it's you can heal by yourself by yeah. the way you can self heal it's it's not it's not always that you you need family you need professional help you can decide to self heal mm-hmm. and it's very possible because i can confidently say that big part of my healing was just me going within and just trying to figure out what it is that i want yeah. and what what it is that i want for myself and how i'm feeling just taking good care of how i'm feeling t- taking good care of myself and with time things just took shape and yeah mm, so mm. there's importance um, in solitude I, i think healing. i think solitude yeah. is very important while healing because hey people people can throw you off balance yeah. sometimes so it's very important for you to have a balance between how much you even even people who are close to you mm-hmm. they can throw you off balance sometimes and you know it's okay to just step aside and you know take some time by yourself yeah true mm-hmm. okay so let's lighten up the mood here. yeah as you can see i don't know if the camera can pick up the full fit but i'm just in black yeah you know, the babes who work in the makeup store you know so uh <laughs> how would you say you know yeah. let me give you a quick bit yeah. something very simple like mm. you can see my makeup style is very It's, chill I love it. I love <laughs> very it. very chill yeah so yeah you're up to it i can do something quick quick on you i'm i'm ready i'm ready you know i'm a makeup artist and that i'm the pressure <laughs> the pressure <laughs> no but hey. um i'm open to having my face done by you yeah. you do whatever you want uh and just so you know i'm going for a shoot wow this shoot wow. this shoot like a model I'm a, i'm a model as well <laughs> I'll just go take a picture and be like this is not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, so, so let's get into it. So. 
Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Na kunyonga ama kwa sawa. Kunyonga. Let's see about the face. Hata nige study nini <laughs> your pictures before this. I know really. I, I I know someone usually does that but I'm an artist so. So like how long did you take for you to quit? <laughs> Big wake up. Ah yeah. <laughs> Where? Ah uh, yeah. What are those I businesses was, that don't last more than a year? Just like but also cuz mm. I was doing it at the same time in school. So first oh, of all I yeah. couldn't even do uh clients for weekdays. Yeah. Cuz oh. like Engineering at Kwa Tura choose will kwa class from eight to <laughs> six. And the course you are doing, man. Yes, I could only do like weekends, oh. first of all. So that means all clients for weekdays okay. gone. Uh, so we can <laughs> now mostly it used to be brides, Zama Friday's graduation. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh. But then I, I loved weddings. Weddings. Mm-hmm. But you know I was like a one woman too. So hey. literally if there's like <laughs> Seven minutes. <laughs> Weddings are crazy. You know, when I first started doing makeup, because mm-hmm. I did like the classes. Mm. Um, Who was teaching it, sorry? Rose. Oh. Makeup by Rose. Yeah. I was doing my eyebrows in the middle of the day, and I was doing it because I could never get them to look the same. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god, that's such a hack. So for you, when you're doing makeup, do you mm-hmm. prefer to a story or a story or a story? I uh, mean, me not from Tamil Nadu, obviously. Yeah, this story will distract me, and it's it has a lot of movement. You know, the only thing I really did not like is the one who wants to hold the mirror there. Yeah. I know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm only one. You know, the process is crazy. <laughs> you don't expect the makeup to look perfect uh, during the process. Like mess around and go back into the business, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming through. <laughs> You know what? Mm-hmm. You know what? You know what? Mm, it's, uh, you it's, know, it's so bad. It's so bad. Okay, it's time for the big reveal. <sighs> I'm ready. Wait, by the way, you guys can comment down below. Say how I did. Be Before nice. I check myself out, you guys just stand <laughs> down below. If just no, it, it, it's okay not to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be nice. <laughs> okay. I am so sour. <laughs> Girl! Yes. Oh my god! Very natural, this very is even, soft. This is even better than I expected. <laughs> wow, babe. You may try. You may try. You may try. Now I brought up a mushroom with a conda. But that is just something that me, I'll notice as a makeup artist. <laughs> but generally everything, even the skin tone, like... Yeah. Hey! I love it. Picasso. I think, I think, yeah, I think I'll be booking you. <laughs> Please. I will, because we're going to have a lip show much. See, Mob. Special rate. Special rate. Yeah, Gioni. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick, soft bit. I think it will be easy enough for you to build up mm-hmm. when you go for your shoot. Okay. You don't need to make up credit. Stop on general. Make up by us. Ah, M-U-A. M-U-A. I don't want to show my thing. Period. Okay. And you mentioned that um, there was one thing that you hadn't achieved. Yes. What was it yet? Um, I had not yet achieved. Um, I wanted to buy myself a car, uh-huh. <laughs> but I had not yet managed to buy myself a car. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that I had not achieved. Uh, yeah, is it something that you're still going for? Yes. The only reason why I have not bought myself a car yet is because I don't know how to drive. Was uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> your princess? But um, I recently enrolled, but I've not even been going for the classes yet. yet. And, and I think I'm just. Being lazy, mm. or like I'm just like you know very nice, nice sideline too. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, yes, I'm going. I, I got one we can use that because yeah, no use. Yes, <laughs> Indeshi. Now hopefully I'll get another one. Yeah, but mm. a Kadi has cars and she yeah. cannot drive. She cannot so drive. <laughs> you yes. can still go ahead and get yourself your car. Yes. Uh, um, so you describe yourself as sort of an iconic yeah. person. Like yeah. decisions that you made have led you to be an iconic person. Yeah. What decisions are this per se? Yes. So I decided, like the very first thing I decided to do is literally say. <laughs> yeah um i i literally took it intentionally to just do me mm-hmm. very intentionally so um another decision i was very very um like 
very, very um, relentless about was <clears throat> me doing makeup full time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I was just in, like, just in, in and out, in and out. I was not, like, very sure that I would do it, like, as a career. So I decided to not do it full time. The other decisions I decided to do is um, now become more business oriented in terms mm-hmm. of now um, myself, you know, um, if you need my services, this is business because yeah. I, I, I was not taking it very seriously. So I decided to, to do like to become more serious about it in terms of a business mm-hmm. and also taking good care of myself. Yes, I took it so much to like really take good care of myself. I remember 2019, I was really going to the gym. Hey, yeah. Hey. No, nowadays, of course, but yeah, I used to take good care of myself. The gym is a revolution every year. <laughs> you know, by the this year, at least I tried. I yeah. did January, March, I think I'm, boy, 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 boy. But Q2, it will still be on the vision board for Q2. <laughs> Work out. <laughs> We're not going to give up. Get into it. Yeah. Mm. So do you think this is like how we should be raising our children? Mm-hmm. Because like um, season one, I mean mm. episode one, mm. season three, yeah. we shot with Chris Njoki of Icon. Yeah. And she said that, you know, she named the store Icon because yeah. that's how yes, she felt. Yes, she felt, yeah. So should we uh, focus more on raising our kids, um, you know, with that sense of how you feel about yourself as opposed mm. to, you know, who you're going to be in the future, like who doctor, lawyer, mm. meaning we should mm. concentrate more on you know, sharpening and making sure they feel really positively about themselves. Yeah, yeah, honestly, because honestly, like right now, um, even my relationship with my dad, honestly, I feel like it became way better once, like my my, my dad and I were in this place of like, whether this is just what I, this is how I like it. Mm-hmm. Of course, with boundaries, because yeah. sometimes I may be a bit too extra <laughs> <laughs> with boundaries. So I feel like, obviously, while raising kids, there's definitely to some extent where you need to allow them to be, Mm -hmm. but also give them space for them to be, like, who they feel like they want to be best. Because at the end of the day, life is very personal. Mm -hmm. Life is very individualistic. In as much as you want your kids to be a certain way, it maybe that's just not the path that they were, that, that was meant for them. And they might end up rebelling, you know? So it's very good. It's, I feel like it's, it's important that you are in the same space with your kids in terms of like friendship, talking. Sometimes friendship in Ezekiel are a bit hard. Oh, yeah, I think it's easier as you grow as up. As you grow up, yeah, because now I'm more friends with my dad than yeah. ever. But yeah, I love kids too. Yeah, because yeah. I also want to have kids in future. Yeah. And I will definitely raise them how I, I, I feel like I would want to be raised Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what is next for dennis what can we look forward to in terms of you know makeup and dennis as a brand yeah so dennis as a brand oh so currently i am in the process of finalizing my studio with a Mm -hmm. few renovations so my studio i'll definitely like do a nice soft launch for it just to because i've never like told people that i moved from mirage Mm -hmm. and now i'm here so i want to like and do a, like a, a nice announcement for the same. And now next for now me, Dennis as a person, mm-hmm. um, I'm looking to change a few things in there, especially in terms of like style, um, also my YouTube content. I wanna I wanna carry it on a bit more because yeah. I've been quiet on YouTube. And now in terms of makeup, I'm working behind the scenes for some very dope stuff. I I'm already in the process of some I am designing some tools, Ooh, so lovely. you know, <laughs> yeah. So I, I will that will definitely take time. I like yeah. theater season and theater artists are it's coming soon. Mm-hmm. That I want to take as much time as possible. And now, yeah, for now, I really want to focus on giving my clients the best of the best mm-hmm. because that's what I'm really passionate about. Like working with my clients, yeah. giving them very good experiences with makeup and image. So yeah. Okay, I, mm. I, I love it. I love to see it. When time comes, hit mm. me up. I'd love to support. Thank you. We shall support. I, thank you so much. And you're very supportive, by the way. Even uh, before you. this. Yeah. Yeah. So we normally do a mm-hmm. sort of time capsule thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you've written many letters, sent many messages. Yes. So this one is, again, similar to what you did, to yeah. like um, talking to 
your future self yeah. but this time like 10 years ahead ah yeah. wow so you could just that camera right there uh-huh. for this one which I think this one okay. right yeah uh-huh. and then you just give yourself a message you can take some time to think about what you want to say yeah like give my 37 year old a yes. message <laughs> okay i think i can be random with it mm-hmm. Um so hi there that seven year old Dennis oh my god i hope you still sexy cuz honey Come with your chilia eh i'm not so proud of you but i'm pretty sure you got it um you're still rocking it i'm sure you're looking younger than 27 <laughs> but above all i hope you're doing okay i hope your you know your mental state your physical state your health state everything is just um and i hope you are in your ranch somewhere um yeah maybe maybe yeah maybe are you in that ranch or your oh no oh okay sawa come up with last can sawa you can you can stay there for a, for a while before coming back to ranch but please make sure everything is happening is going well back at home and you're enjoying your vacation in alaska with whoever you're with <laughs> But yeah, I hope you have a luxury makeup brand that is booming. I hope um new south there is very positive. I hope brands out there are working with you and I hope that you really you really kill it as you should. And I love you. Oh. Um <laughs> <laughs> that that's actually so sweet. Yeah. And Chris again from mm-hmm. the first episode also said mm-hmm. CG actually. Eh? So it looks like that is going to be the theme of this season. Everyone is going to be like yeah. if you let yourself go I'm going to come for you. I'm going to come for you CG actually. Yeah, please because yeah, you you may lose yourself. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, that's it for the episode. Thank, Thank you. you so much for inviting us into your space. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Like I was telling you that me doing your makeup was I know. for me. I know. So really really and uh, and so uh, how so was it therapeutic you may feel poor you feel poor yeah oh. i felt like you know it because it's, it's a form of art it is yeah? and also a form, of, a form of expression yes yes i appreciate the makeup Caribbean thank sana. you so much for gracing up our space and yeah i know you've become in here more mm. <laughs> so now na yeah it's meant to be meant yes. to be <laughs> so thank you so much all right thank you guys and we'll see you on the next one <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Boy, I can't wait to hold this.